going on guys? It's been a while since I did a video and uh, I keep shooting this video but it still comes out to like 17 minutes long and that shit's is way too long and too boring to expect you guys to watch a 17 minute video. Um, so I'm going to get into a couple things real quick. Robbie574, like I said, tagged me for uh, my EDC or what knife I carry. Now, I don't carry a knife on me every day during the hunting seasons, uh, during the summer preseason. There's certain uh, tools that I have in my truck, and I call them tools. Uh, that would be my mid-size, my full-size axe, my uh, Gerber Gator machete. That machete has been the single tool that we've used to clear shooting lanes, to trim branches, to get things cleared away, to get tree stands set up. I will not use anything else. It's lightweight, it's versatile, it can take a beating, and it just works unbelievably. As far as for an actual knife that I use, there's two of them that I use throughout different times of the year. During spring season, during May, that's our spring turkey, is when I carry the second knife. After May, going into late spring, early summer fishing season, and during camping, I carry this knife right here. And as you can see, it has a nylon sheath, it's got the little button clip to it, and it's got the uh, little hole where you can wear it on your belt. It's a uh, fixed blade, straight edge, and it has a rubber grip. It's got the little eyelet right there, uh, so you can run cordage or whatever through it if you want. Um, as you can see right there near the tip, there's a couple little dings in the blade. It's because I haven't put it on the ceramic sticks since the last time I used it, which I definitely have to do. But the reason why I carry this uh, for my go-to fishing knife or camping knife, your hands get sweaty, your hands get wet. Uh, with this type of grip, my hand does not slip off. So therefore, I'm guaranteed not to cut myself or be able to come home with all my fingers. Uh, works just great for the applications that I use it in. Uh, be it from gut and fish, uh, cutting fishing line, making little uh, sticks, whatever, for cooking hot dogs, roasting marshmallows, putting uh, frog legs on to cook over the fire. It's just an awesome, awesome little knife. The second knife that I'm going to be getting to is American made, 100% in the U.S., including the leather sheath. Now, some of you that watched my videos from before are already going to see this knife because I did a video on it once before. But this is my Case Double X. It has a leather wrapped handle. Uh, it's a little bit lighter in color, but I gave it an oil bath to put moisture back into the handle uh, like they suggest to do. So it takes on a little darker of a color. It's a really thin blade and it gets thinner as it goes out to the tip. And the blade is surgical steel. And it also has the little rivets in the back for your thumb to get in and do some close work as skinning your game. You can get also get it personalized. As you can see, I have my name laser etched into the blade and the initials on the back. Small knife, but this is the only knife that I need to field dress, skin, and process my wild game. Uh, depending on the distributor for case and location, I've seen this knife, uh, this knife as cheap as $60, I've seen it all the way up to $85. If you get it personalized, obviously it's going to cost you a little bit more, but for any hunter or outdoorsman, I would highly recommend the Case Double X. Now, to get to another quick point of the video, as you can see I have here on the table is my DPMS with the carrying handle with the scope mount. This year I'm going to be implementing my AR as my go-to deer rifle. I'm going to kind of break up the season between using this rifle and using uh, the Winchester Model 94. One thing to make this video a little uh, quicker, I'm not going to throw everything together and show it hands-on. I might do that later on uh, if you guys want to see it and actually prove what I'm telling you instead of thinking that it's a bunch of BS. But the carrying handle, as you can see, obviously, is removed from the rifle. Now, with that said, once you remove the scope from your rifle, people are going to say it knocks it off zero. That's not true. I saved money by buying this top rail that mounts on top of the carrying handle. The reason I did so, it's cheaper than buying the higher scope mounts to get the scope up above 
the front post and the rail that's on top of the top receiver and plus with this mount I can also utilize the iron sights for a closer shot and I can still get in there and flip this sight down it's hard though because I haven't played with it much and there we've got the smaller circle for farther ranges and this is such a pain in the ass because I really haven't worked it that much and then back to a larger circle for close range shots but the reason why you can always get this in the same exact spot of where it was when I zeroed it in you can see the two screws that go underneath the carrying handle the way that I have it mounted on the top receiver is that front screw fits in right into this rail all the way forward the carrying handle is flush with the top of this rail I've had it off the rifle six times each time I've put it back on it's still hitting right where I'm aiming and for the nuts you can see there's no bullet in the chamber bolt is back there's no magazine in the rifle also just to some people that might think that the AR platform in 223 is too light and too fast of a caliber for big game hunting again shot placement regardless of whatever your means to take wild game are shot placement is the number one critical thing the second thing you want to do is to make sure you have the right cartridge coupled up with the firearm that you're using since 223 and AR platform rifles for their accuracy the velocity have become so popular over you know the last 10 years a lot of the manufacturers are getting into making a cartridge for a 223 that is capable of ethically and humanely harvesting big game uh, just two examples Hornady Superformance and Federal they both have uh, 223's now Federal has a 77 grain Sierra Match King and a hollow point with a boat tail Superformance has a ballistic tip boat tail um, in 77 grain and 70 grain Federal Fusion also has another 70 grain uh, fusion bullet so there's no reason compare that to a 243 of why that AR coupled with those two cartridges will not be able to be used for big game and I'm gonna put that to the test this coming season so until then I've got another little clip for you guys of a uh, nice fox that my brother had bagged out on the property when we were doing some uh, coyote hunting Fox are predators too. They've been killing the shit out of our turkey population. Uh, the nests that we've seen have fox tracks all over it and they're eating the eggs. Uh, so fox, like coyotes, are predators. So check that video out after this. Uh, it's nothing too special. Robbie574, again, thanks for the tag. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Everybody else that's watching, be safe, have fun, and I'll catch you later. Alrighty, so with the big game season done, we're on the property doing some predator control. We're in the setup not even five minutes. And I'm still, the adrenaline's kind of pumping because seriously, three seconds after my brother got done calling, I hear a shot and I'm looking over and I'm not seeing him. So now I'm like, what the hell happened? Did he slip and something happened or you know what? So he's looking over at me, big ass smile, gives me a thumbs up. Well, Predator control is predator control, and we are on the back side of this ridge. Came down this ridge right here and bagged himself a nice fox. Male. Look at That's a nice fox right there. Holy shit, those hornities ripped him right open. How's his tail look? I don't know, but I'm going to keep it. Bushy? Yeah, that's a nice fox right there. Is that where the first shot went in? Huh? Yeah, that's that's you know what we're gonna do? Yeah. We're gonna throw it down here and we're gonna come back here for coyote tonight. Alright. Yeah, he come right off he come right off here. He ran right across this log. You can see the, the tracks. So he came oh it looks like he pissed right there, but he came right oh, down. He he, he, and he then, thought he thought he was gonna be king shit. Pretty much the whole, we gotta, I gotta pick up some more bullets.
I still got a clip on me. You got a knife on you? No, that's in my bag. I was gonna take his tail. Oh, well, we can see what he could use for fur. I mean, well, obviously I think that. That, I think that was the first, because when I hit him, he dropped. Boom. So that, I think that was. I think those hornadies are a little too, too overkill for a fox. But, nice, nice healthy fox. I want this Predator tail. down. I want this tail. It's a male. Okay. There's balls. <laughs> nice, uh, good size, good size fox. All right, so we'll uh, shut this off and see what we can do for, I don't know, you want to let it cool down or we'll drop him up by the lean-to and... No, we're going we're gonna to go set him. We're going we're gonna to hunt this ravine tonight. All right. So for the season, my brother is now 2-0 on me for both big game and for predator control. Hmm. Alrighty, guys. Figured I'd uh, share that with you. I'm going to shut this off right now and we'll catch you back here in a, in a minute. I mean, hell, I wasn't even really set up in my spot yet, so I didn't even get the chance to get the camera out. But, alrighty, catch you guys here later.